paid staff of Lister Sponsored Radio, KPFA, is affiliated with Communication Workers of America, CWA, Local 9415. The time now is 2 p.m. It's KPFA, KPFB, Berkeley, KFCF, Fresno, online at kpfa.org. And the time, again, if you didn't hear me the first time, 2 o'clock. Stay tuned for About Health. Welcome to About Health. I'm Rachel Bryant, your host today, in for Dr. Michael Lenore. I hope everyone is feeling peaceful today after maybe some of you have had many activities over the last week preparing for the holiday season, and that's kind of what I'm going to be talking about today. Today, uh, my guest is Amelia Barili. This isn't her first time on About Health. I'm so glad that you have come back. She is a yoga and qigong teacher here in Berkeley. And we're going to be talking about um, how we tie our emotions to uh, the different organs in our body. And this is a very timely um, subject in that uh, the seasons are changing. We just had the winter solstice. People are celebrating the holidays. So there is a lot of change in the energy, and we'll be talking about how to tie that to our emotions and our bodies. Welcome to the show, Amelia. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Yes. Welcome back. So just why don't we begin a little bit with your background, um, because I think it's a very interesting background. Um, you are a yoga and qigong teacher, and you have been trained internationally and been doing this work. Can you just explain briefly what yoga and qigong is? Yes, yes. Um, well, I studied yoga in India 30 years ago in a school that trained yoga teachers to teach yoga in India. It's called Kavalya Dhamma Yoga School. And uh, it's one of the few at that time recognized by the government to teach yoga in India. And um, I have been practicing all my life and I also uh, have learned several kinds of qigong and I teach wild goose qigong in the Berkeley Buddhist Monastery. And both of them are systems that mainly look at the body as energy. So uh, through different practices, I mean, yoga, if we think of yoga in the last years and this uh, fashion that there is or this practice of practicing yoga, a lot is done through asanas, which are the postures. But really, if you go to the basic, um, most fundamental um, work on yoga, which is the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. They are, sutras are like short sentences that mm -hmm. are uh, passed from teacher to student before the printing uh, thing came on. And of the 396 um, sutras in the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, only three are about asanas. So there is a, when you ask me what is yoga, you know, yoga is the cultivation of um, the union of the body and the mind. And so basically it's this understanding that the body is energy. And then how can we work with that energy to achieve harmony and inner peace? And Qigong does it the same, you know, it has a very similar goal, but instead of um, working through pranayama and the asanas and the meditation, it does it a lot through cultivation of the chi, which is similar to the prana, this vital force, and the stimulation of that flow of energy through the meridians. And so there is also some other kinds of meditation and some, um, the form, for example, different forms of uh, Qigong, some of them based on the movement of uh, mm -hmm. wild animals, like mm -hmm. the one I teach is the wild goose. And uh, there are stretches, there is self-massage. So both of them are very integral. And um, I think what's so fascinating is when you can combine the wisdom of both um, and what they uh, have these intuitions and this development of the body as energy and then combine where one leaves, where the other one starts. It's very fascinating. Now, I've taken your Qigong class at the Berkeley Monastery, and it is a great class, and I l appreciate it that we began learning to trace our meridian. So just give us a 101 
simple explanation of what the meridians are, indeed. Um, the meridians are like channels of energy in the body. I mean, most people have heard about acupuncture, and so they know that there are points uh, that the acupuncturist put the needles there. And then there is like a, like lines of energy that would unite different um, paths or rivers of energy in the body. And then each one of these meridians is connected with some major organ. Uh, of the 12 major meridians, which were the ones that we were tracing, but there mm -hmm. are many other ones. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a really very complicated subject, but we could start learning some of the basics, and it really does a difference. I mean, mm -hmm. you, to start the day by tracing the meridians or go to sleep before that, you know, uh, trace the meridians and then go to sleep or do it before meditation, it adds a very different quality to the pra to, to your day and to your meditation, etc. And there are so many benefits to both of those practices and certainly in combining them. And today we wanted to talk about how one of the benefits might be being more in touch with the sensations in your body and in your emotions. And I began saying that this is an interesting time of year and uh, a highly emotional time for some people. So how can one benefit from the practice of uh, Qigong or yoga or this mindfulness at this time of year? Oh, a lot. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that no matter what our circumstance is, I mean, maybe we are alone or maybe we are with families and friends or there are so many moments where something can go different from what we expected or we may think, oh, you know, why am I alone at this time of the year or whatever. So there are many, many different reasons for emotions to come up. And that's natural, and we don't want to repress the emotions. We just want to get to a better understanding of how is this mechanism that totally affects our moods and sometimes it affects our capacity of um, communicating with others, and sometimes it even affects our health. Mm -hmm. And I want to talk more about that. How does it affect our health? What is the impact of our emotions on our physical body and specifically our internal organs? So does it show up as dis-ease or yeah, speak um, about that? Mm, so many things I know about this. Okay, um, starting with the term of disease, you know, usually or sometimes, and, and we, we mentioned this a little bit the other day, but I think it's a good uh, opportunity to remember this, and maybe there are some new listeners today, that usually um, in, in India and in China, and, and if we think a little bit more about our own health, uh, health is a state of balance, right? And so when, when the balance is broken, either through exhaustion or um, emotions or um, different kinds of agents, when the balance is broken, then we feel a certain unease. And then if we don't go to the roots of that unease and try to change what's happening, eventually it will manifest as a disease. And that is because if we understand that we are not just matter, if our, that our body is not just matter, but that at the very core we are energy, then when we have these emotions and when we have these upsets, this unease, the energy doesn't flow so naturally. Something gets contracted, it's tense, and it gets like stagnant. And that's the, the cause of complications like pain or emotional imbalance or eventually even a disease. Now, you said something very interesting. At our very core, we are energy. Explain more what you mean by that. What What does that mean? Um, that's the subject of a book I'm writing. Yeah, <laughs> tell us about it. Um, well, I think anything at the very core is energy. I mean, even if we think of Einstein's equation, you know, energy equal matter, in general, when we look at the world and we look at ourselves and all that, there is this predominance of, tra of understanding things as matter because it's the most obvious and the most visible. But if you go to the very core of things, like, for example, um, we are matter. I mean, I can see you there and your bones and your structure and your appearance and your body, but... Um, We've seen that really we are energy. That's what moves us. And that's also what is affecting at this very moment uh, what's happening at the level of our cells and everything. Each thought, each, each emotion um, constitutes the very center of our being. 
So, and, and the same, I think, in a social way and in a worldwide way. And so this understanding that energy is at the core of everything is tied not only with health and with harmony and with well-being, but also with social issues and with, you know, respect for nature and everything, because it's, it's all connected, spirituality, health, uh, justice, it's, mm-hmm. it's all part of one state of greater understanding. Talk about that <coughs> some more, um, how energy is at the core of social justice and what's happening on the planet, because I, I think it's easier to grasp the energy in our body. We can sense ourselves and feel that, and many people have practiced yoga or qigong, but how is it connected? Okay, well, I'm going to go some steps back okay. first to um, the energy within our spiritual realm, our own one, because I think it's easier for us to understand, mm-hmm. and, and then to the social. But, for example, if we ask ourselves, what are the roots of happiness, and, and either as a society or as an individual? And usually we think, well, something that makes me happy, right? So I want all the good things. I want the great guy in my life. I want, you know, uh, money to do the things that I like. I want fame. I want, you know, in in, uh, Buddhist terms, there are four pairs of opposite, pleasure and pain, gain and loss, fame and disgrace, and praise and blame. And um, this um, is something that also it has been very well explained by many different thinkers. And right now I'm thinking of Pema Children, uh, who also has explained this very nicely. And the terms that she used, and I liked uh, the way she puts it, is she says, well, usually we think that happiness for us would be to have all the positive things of these pairs of opposites. So, of course, I want ple- pleasure instead of pain, and I want gain. I, I will try to avoid loss, or I want the fame instead of the disgrace, and I want the praise instead of the blame. But the thing is that that kind of happiness, which is, okay, everything needs to go well for me, Um it's unreal because nothing is happy for all the time. You know, it's it's impossible to keep. So it's it's tied to circumstances, and we can very easily lose it. Mm-hmm. And we will because it's, it's it's unreal to think that everything will be that way. Also, it's it's kind of egotistic because usually my pleasure or my gain could be the loss of somebody else, and there we tied with the social things. Mm-hmm. Um, so. Really, if we lose the things that we want, then we experience pain. So the roots of happiness are not just to have what we want as we want all the time, but to get to a stage where we can understand that there are these oscillations and to develop some kind of equanimity towards that. And that's what I want to talk to you about. How do we develop? Uh, the equanimity between the pleasure and the pain or just really the pulsing of life, the ups and downs and the pulsing of life. And can the practices that we talked about earlier help? How do we do that? I think it's easier said than done. I think when you're in the middle of your happiness, you're in complete denial that anything could go wrong. And um, when you're feeling miser- miserable, you want to wallow in that and, and at times can't imagine. And I, I feel like as I began the show, saying that at this time of year, I think a lot of people feel that way. And I I don't want to get into, like, you know, a holiday depression show here. But it is a a good time for us to be mindful of how to bring that balance into our life as we go into the new year. Mm -hmm. And so speak about that some more. How do we balance our, our emotional bodies? Okay, we could talk about different ways of approaching this, okay. uh, trying to get to balance. Um, one would be just some simple practices that if we think twice, we will always realize we already knew it. Perhaps we don't <laughs> practice it. <laughs> when it happens, you know, just take a deep breath. I mean, you, um, when the mind is... Um, The mind is like a monkey, you know, like an ape that is always jumping and it wants this and it wants that and whatever. And so how do we get hold of that monkey? Yes. And so one way is to first calm down. So what you do to calm down, you try to have some deep breath. You inhale like if you were sighing slowly and deeply but without forcing. 
and then there is a pause and then you exhale and you let go of the tensions like if they were raining along your body and melting in the floor. And you do several of these deep breaths, always with this idea that it's like sighing, so that will make you have a deep breath but relax at the same time. And there is a pause, and then as you exhale, you let go together with the air of the tensions, like if they would slide along your body and melt on the floor. And you have several of the, these deep breaths, and that already will calm your mind a little bit, <laughs> so that then you can think about what's the next step, and, and I'll tell you some of the big steps. I don't know about you listeners, but just taking that deep breath with Amelia has certainly just calmed the energy <laughs> in the studio here. So I appreciate that you actually shared that practice with us. It's so simple, I think. Breathing comes so natural to us, but even our breath gets choked off in everyday life and um, you know people don't breathe as deeply as they might if they were more conscious of their breathing and so that's a very mm-hmm. simple thing I think that's always available to us the awareness of breath it doesn't cost anything you yeah. don't have to be anywhere special mm-hmm. you can do it any place you don't need any equipment you know yes. just just the mindfulness of saying okay here I go again with one of these things it may be you know that something happen that you even think well how could this person do this or whatever but in the end the one that gets hurt is you if you get stuck with it so usually we we have several reactions like somebody says something and then one um, <clears throat> immediately either feels the pain and and you feel it as a very strong sensation and there may be even tears or whatever or the idea comes of how could you and then if you identify with the idea and stay with it longer it becomes a thought and then it really stacks and and you feel how could you do this to me and all that and then there is like what you would say the wallowing so the pain is unavoidable i mean something will always happen that that it wasn't exactly like you wanted it or like you thought it should be now the question is can we be mindful that since we know that in the long run this is going to cause us more suffer than even to the other person. And also, in the long run, we also don't want the suffering of the other person, but let's start with our own suffering. So we think, okay, there it goes. Can I disengage with this thought? Instead of I totally identify with it and then giving it more power so that it gets, we get more stuck into it. Um, is there any way that I can see it as just a belief thought or a pain thought or something that arises, but that is just one more fluctuation of energy and it doesn't necessarily carry my deepest being? And so if you can take your deep breath and and relax and exhale, and then also get very interested in the sensation you know, curiosity in the sensation as a sensation. Wow, what is this? I mean, my lips are trembling or my my tears are falling and, you know, but it's, it's a lot of energy moving inside me and I'm interested in it as energy moving. It's, it creates a very different um, handling of the emotion where you are not repressing it, you are not negating it. I mean, it's logical that, you know, not logical, but let's say it's natural that that and I say logical in the sense that it's not a thought just, but, you know, it could be a sensation in the body and it could be a feeling. So, but if you get interested in the sensation and you don't identify with it and this is me and I'm being hurt and this has happened in the past and this, you know, may produce such thing in the future and all the things that we do that make us get stuck. So just go to the sensation and observe the sensation and think, okay, for my own happiness and my own harmony and my own um, well-being, I would like for once to observe this just as a sensation instead of charging it with suffering. And, you know, we are not saying it doesn't happen once and forever, but we keep reminding us and then and eventually becomes a little bit like a habit and often you can disengage and sometimes you cannot, but... Because you have this steadfastness with yourself and this friendship to yourself and you say, okay, yes, I'm in the path. Now I know, you know, I have some tools and I want to keep remembering 
That's all that you need. And then you start this long journey that will carry you through your whole life. <laughs> yes. You're listening to About Health. Uh, this is Rachel Bryant. My guest today, Amelia Barili, truly a jewel here in the Berkeley area to us. I'm going to invite you to call in if you have questions about anything that we're talking about. Perhaps you'd like to share some of the emotions that are up for you at this time of year. Um, in the Berkeley area, you can give us a call at 848-4425 and outside the area, 1-800-958-9008. Again, that's 1-800-958-9008 and in Berkeley, 848-4425. We invite you to join our conversation. I like the term that you used earlier, the monkey mind, and mm -hmm. I just became familiar with that term uh, recently. And it's so interesting in my own experience uh, when I have practiced exactly what you just explained, just to be able to see those emotions to come up, not to run away with them, not to pretend like I'm not angry or sad or whatever it is that's coming up. It is a cumulative effect. It seems like it becomes easier and, and I, I'm learning to catch it more quickly yeah. uh, and it and so it seems like it just builds the energy builds to your awareness builds uh, around the emotions and it certainly cuts the pain and uh, suffering short and and certainly the feelings come back again so I appreciate what you just said it's not that someday you become completely devoid of any emotions or whatever no and, and really we don't want to get rid of our emotions it's our, our emotions are our reactions are our, our, our um, sign that we are alive so we just don't want them to run us you know yes. it's, it's it's um it's wonderful to feel alive it's wonderful to feel but we don't want that the pain would become suffering and that we would then get stuck into it and then that the emotion would, would run us and that then will interfere in our communication with others or interfere with our health or, you know. Um, so I would like to go back to this practice of Maitri or uh, Meta, which is a friendship and it's, it's first, uh, and it's in a way a long answer to your first question about uh, how is all this related to the world and to us and all that. Mm -hmm. And when we are capable to look at ourselves, like you were saying just now, and um, catch ourselves when these thoughts are coming and maybe even be able to stop them sometimes, you know, so that we don't put on top of the idea, then the thought, then the identification with it, and then the suffering. So the pain comes up and we deal with it without getting stuck with the pain. So all these observing, and, and then other times we see ourselves starting a conversation, thought that we were on top of it, and then going into all the drama again, and you know, because of the pain that you had just had. And that's okay too. I mean, you, this friendship towards oneself and this steadfastness, is knowing that sometimes you'll be able to catch it and sometimes you won't be able to catch it. But like with a very good friend who you know the weakness and the, mm -hmm. and the strength, and you are, because there is nothing to hide, you are still very good friends with that person and it's wonderful to know that you know all of the sides of it. The same towards yourself. And so the, the joy comes from knowing that you have these techniques, be it yoga or qigong or meditation or this practice of observing, that that you are your own friend and you will always be taking care of these things and and you know and that it's okay if sometimes you recede and then you start again. It's it's the steadfastness and the carrying force that goes that it's going to take you a long time. And also another of the virtues is moderation, not putting the um, 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 the expectations too high because sometimes we tend to do that. We have very big expectations and then we always catch ourselves falling short of the expectations. Mm -hmm. So take a rest, make the aspiration a little bit more reasonable and more achievable and go for that. And once you're establishing that, go to the next. And, and, you know, just be keeping patient and very good friend with yourself. And if you can observe that, all these mechanisms in yourself and be able to do it with yourself, then eventually you can also do it with somebody else. You can develop that friendship or that compassion, understand that they are also going perhaps under an emotion and so they are not communicating so well. And 
you know, it's, it has ripples effects. Yeah, because if you're more calm, you emanate calmness. Yes. And then that eventually is like a rippling effect. Yes, it does. We're going to go to the phone lines now. We have Deanna, who's been waiting from San Francisco. Deanna, welcome to About Health. Hi, thank you. Um, I uh, was wondering if you knew any practitioners who work something like you in San Francisco. Uh, no, I unfortunately I don't. But um, you could try to contact the Wenwu School. What's that? Wenwu W E N W U School okay. in El Cerrito. Uh, they they teach Wild Goose Qigong. Um, okay. This that I'm doing, which is combining the Qigong and the um, Yoga, I don't know of anyone. I mean, I'm, uh, I do teach workshops like in Mount Madonna. You know Mount Madonna? No, I'm kind of bound to San Francisco due to the oh. fact that I have no car. Okay, um, the okay. Thing is that well, I'm there is also carpooling. So Mount Madonna is a great place in the Santa Cruz Mountains, and, and there, you know, uh, we are doing, I'm doing this thing. But, uh, yeah. um, the thing that I'm dealing with is um, grief and lung condition stuff. Mm, mm-hmm. So I I know a little bit about the meridians because I did take some acupun- acupressure for a while. Great. So so you know about lung one, the letting go point. Right, right near the collarbone, right? Right, right. So you would go to uh, the crease near the armpit and then go like four um, um, width, um, finger width up, mm-hmm. and then near the first intersco- intercostal first uh, right. space, then you press there and you breathe deeply. All these things that we were saying. You have a child there, a baby? Yeah, a toddler. Oh, how wonderful! Yeah, <laughs> yeah, my toes. That's so, the other thing is like when you're parenting a small child, sometimes you don't have the moments that you need to even take the time to think about uh, watching your reaction. Sometimes your reaction is right. automatic. Yeah, but but you can always deep breathe. Huh? Yeah, I do that. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I'm the mother of a. She'll be six in a couple of days. And even at your toddler's age, you can teach her uh-huh. to be still and to breathe deeply. And really, your child will pick up on the energy that you're carrying. Quite sure. like what Amelia was saying, it's sort of a ripple effect. So yeah. the more calm that you make yourself as the parent, uh, the more calm your child will be uh, and more in touch with their sensations. I think children are perfectly in touch uh, with their sensations and, and we sort of move away from that as we grow older in the world. So you were saying you were working with pain and grief and uh, this is a, this is very interesting because of course the lung is very affected by grief. What are you doing? Um, taking some Chinese herbs, getting occasional acupuncture and I'm not doing anything regularly for myself. I would love to. But uh-huh. again, the life is not uh, stabilized yet. Uh, right. Many different situations have come and gone and so I have to take each day as it comes. It's very tricky. Right, right. Another... Oh, sorry. Sorry, there is a book that I would recommend. Um, there is a book on emotional healing uh, oh. by Michael Reed. Ha, uh, Michael Reed Gach. Oh, okay. He is the director of the Acupressure Institute mm-hmm. and recently has published this book, which has um, quick tips for emotions and also has uh, daily practices that you can do for uh, and also grief and all that. And uh, the Acupressure Institute is in. Um, in Berkeley, yeah, but I'm sure you can find the website. And the book is really nice. Yeah. So maybe that you could practice at home, you know, read the book and get some of the practices and uh, practice when your baby is asleep. Or right. <laughs> so for Qigong, as far as um, the, you're saying this, that your style is, is the wild goose style, mm-hmm. and there are many others? or like Yeah, there are like thousands. Uh, oh, okay. So, but okay, no but right. but Walgus Chikon is one of the uh, seven that was recognized by the government of India as oh. uh, having very strong therapeutic effects, okay. and so um, that's um, something that. Uh, it's it's important because it doesn't have any side effects. Um, another point that you could perhaps try, and these are good for all the listeners for balancing emotions, is uh, if you put your hands together and you put um, your uh, index finger towards the center of your breastbone, uh-huh. um, more or less when they're at the level of the heart, there is a little indentation there. 
And you just kind of breathe deeply, inhale like sign. And as you exhale, you let go of the tensions, like we were saying before, like if they are sliding along the body and melting on the floor. And you do several of these deep breaths. That spirit balancing doesn't matter what the emotion is, if it is grief or anger or And you could also imagine that you are sucking the air like from that point. You know, you are doing it from your nose, but just imagine that bring your attention there and inhale like sucking the air from there. And then releasing it from that point. And really, you don't need to know lots of techniques. I mean, if you know the letting go and you know this one, that will help you a lot. I and hope. Just to help the listeners get a visual, I'm watching Amelia in a very beautiful, peaceful posture here. Her spine was straight. We're sitting in chairs. And her hands were sort of in a prayer position or what people identify as a prayer position. And then she spoke about bringing that toward your your index finger toward your breastbone. Um, so just so that... Yeah. And I think it's not a coincidence, you know, that uh, in so many cultures, including the Catholic Church, uh, we have this praying yeah. form. I mean, I think in the very early times they knew that this is a energy um, practice that brings calmness. And so that's used for prayer and spirituality and health and calmness is all together. Yes. We have some other callers who've been waiting to speak to you, Amelia. We're going to go now to Kathy in San Francisco. Kathy, welcome to About Health. What's your question? Yeah, thanks so much. It's the first call I've ever made, but oh, I, I saw a picture of Amelia in the Mount Madonna uh, flyer, and I was so struck by the beauty and character in her face. So that I'm, and then I tuned in your program. So I'm wondering, um, well, I could look at the Mount Madonna, Madonna catalog, but are you going to be there again um, in the next couple of months? Um, unfortunately, well. Um I mean, I'm, I'm writing a book right now, so I have taken leave of absence from UC Berkeley and from all other activities. I'm going to be for a month in silent during the month of January and then writing, uh, during this year. But the next workshop in Mount Madonna is going to be, um, at uh, Thanksgiving time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but what are the things you're doing? Um, well, it was interesting because the previous caller was talking about grief and lungs, and I think basically that's that's it with me. But I've had shortness of breath, and I've, I've been attrib- I'm, I'm actually in, in my seventies, and I've attributed it to the um, antihypertensive medication, you know, for high blood pressure that they've given me, and so they're trying to change them. But I um, I had seen you. I think listed someplace at, at the the Berkeley Monastery on Monday evenings, and are you you're not going to be doing that for a while? Uh, yes, that you're not? that that I will do after my months of silence. I'm going to start again with the classes in February. Then? In February, February six, uh, we start again in the Berkeley Buddhist Monastery. Thank you so much for asking. It's uh, Monday nights. 7.30 to 9. Yeah, well, I'd have to. Uh, I'd, I'm in San Francisco, so I guess, I, I mean, I could take the BART and just walk through the neighborhood. I mean, I I, yeah. I think you're fairly near the center BART. Is, that's correct. Yeah. Um, you, you can come to um, Berkeley, downtown Berkeley, BART station, and then we are like, Three or four blocks away from it. Yeah, so I think I have passed it, but I, I don't. I mean, I don't mean to interrupt you, but I, I think rather than, um, I would like to study with you, and I think I would make it possible. And, and to the Deanna before, if she wants to carpool, maybe we could. Oh, you know, there uh, you are. That's wonderful. I'm in, no, no. I'm. I mean, I, I, you know, I, I'm for, uh, you know, promoting health. And as I say, the shortness of breath. And now they're giving me an inhaler, and I just don't like any of this. And maybe, maybe. It has to be, but I do think. I mean, I know there's grief, you know, or connect, right. uh, in and uh, certainly with connected with my lungs. I, you know, on a, and um, I, I much prefer a natural way. And I, I was very struck by your face. So um, I mean, I, you know, I, I just wanted to tell you that. I mean, that's why I'm calling. And um, but you're kind of then you will be essentially not available until February 6th. No, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, that's but. Uh, 
from okay. February 6 to June, I will be doing a course of uh, four months in the Berkeley Buddhist Monastery every Monday night. And I want to That's confirm. Nine. Go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. I, I want to confirm um, what you were saying that you see a connection between the heart and the lung. Yeah. In the Chinese um, teaching, in the Chinese medicine, uh, they talk about the triple warmer, which is a meridian that the upper, uh, it, it's, we don't have an organ like that in the Western uh, medicine, but it would have three sections in the chest and, you know, they are horizontal. So you, the first one, the top one is the lung and the heart and they, then the middle one is the more digestive organs like the stomach and the spleen and then further down, uh, is the more, uh, reproductive and excretory, especially excretory system. So they, they talk about a lot about the connection between the heart and the lung. And if we think for a moment, we know that when our heart is very upset, our mm. chest feels, you know, like we can't breathe. Oh, yeah. And, you know, and, and so there is a very direct connection between these two organs and they are very much related to the immunological system because they are the ones that process the most refined and subtle form of qi, um, you know, the, the, the essence that is the, um, the, pure, the purest essence. I mean, usually we get the essence of our qi through what we eat and what we digest and then that gets um, carried through the work of the spleen to the heart and the heart and the lungs are the ones that work with our most essential uh, chi. So it's very important to be able to help these two organs to work well. And the other nice thing with the qigong is that we work with the whole body from the top to the uh, top of the head to the feet. Hmm. And so you balance the whole, I mean, it's, it's a whole current of energy. I mean, we usually, because we think more on organs and all that, we think, oh, maybe this is affected or that yeah. is affected. But really, yeah. it's a whole current of energy and we want to work with it. And eventually everything influences everything else. So I hope you will be able to make it and I'll be very well, happy to make... meet you and thank you for all your compliments. <laughs> I mean, I don't know who you are, no, but thank I, yeah, you. No, I'm, 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 uh, <laughs> I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm older and I, you know, and I, you know, but there was something in your face and, and I almost got to the Mount Madonna thing. But at any rate, um, February 6th is not that long away. So, uh, thank you very much because I definitely want something holistic and I don't like any kind of Western medicines, but I've kind of been you know, I, well, anyway, I'll let somebody else talk to you, but thank you very I'll much. I'll do everything I can to help you. <laughs> yes, well, I, you'll, you'll see me. <laughs> thank okay. you, Amelia. Yeah, bye-bye. Thanks, Thanks bye -bye. for your call, Kathy. I'm going to invite you to give us a call and join our conversation. Today, the guest on About Health is Amelia Burili, a yoga and Qigong teacher, and we're talking about many, many things. Um, in Berkeley, you can give us a call at 510-848-4425. 848-4425, outside the area, 1-800-958-9008. We do invite you to join our conversation. I wanted to go back to something that Kathy brought up. Well, first, Kathy, you're very perceptive. Amelia is very beautiful, and she attracts people from all over the Bay Area to this class on Monday nights in Berkeley. Uh, there was a woman who was driving up, I think, from almost as far as Monterey or something. Yeah, Gilroy, Gilroy, Gilroy. And, and all ages and all backgrounds and so there's a very wonderful group of people that come together to take her class and um, I just sense as you do that probably your carpool and transportation issues will work themselves out if you make it there so um, I hope to see you there in February uh, too. So yeah. maybe if Yana calls here to the studio then we could find some way connect of connect Yana and Kathy if they're yeah. interested yeah. okay that would be possible if you guys gave a call back again the number is 848 Four four two five and the other number, the eight hundred number, one eight hundred nine five eight nine zero zero eight. Now, one thing that we learned about in the class was that each organ is connected to a certain time of day, two hours a day. So, um, I don't know if we want to go through all of those, but what is the organ that uh, is active during the time of the class? Oh, well, the 7.30 to 9, uh, the organ that's most active is the pericardium or the sex and circulation, uh, so different traditions name it in different way within the um, Chinese tradition. And the pericardium, of course, we don't, in the West, we don't think of it as an organ, but as a membrane that protects the heart. 
but the Chinese uh, feel that this uh, function of protecting the heart is just so important that they consider they have a whole meridian for just that. And of course, the pericardium would be one that would be affected when there are issues of trust that has been um, broken, and you know, so so many heart pains that come from. Um, when we feel that our heart has been somehow affected. Um, I'd like to speak just a little bit about the body clock idea, and is that there are these 12 main meridians, and each one of them is most active at two, uh, two hours, but of course they are active all the time, um, all of them, otherwise we wouldn't be yes. alive. Mm -hmm. But there are some, some interesting things, like for example, 7 to 9 in the morning, uh, sorry, 5 to 7 in the morning is the time when the large intestine is most active. And it's, it would be a very good practice if you are up before 7 to be able to um, evacuate, you know, go to the bathroom before seven. And then that makes space for the next meridian, which is the uh, stomach meridian. Then you'll be able to have your breakfast in the, in the most optimal. I mean, we are talking here really, really refined ideas about energy and, and how to get into this, um, the best possible rhythm during the day, you know, and take care of um, mm -hmm. what our rhythms would be. Okay. Like, Another very interesting meridian is the gallbladder meridian, which is from uh, 9 to 11. Sorry, let me see just for a moment. I, numbers are something that I never like, so I'll, I'll tell you in a minute. I think it's 11 to 1. Yeah, let's see. Um, okay, I want to just mention once again, um, our producer Mickey is reminding me to tell Deanna that you can call back and leave your phone number and she'll pass it on to Kathy. So please do call back and perhaps we'll come back to talking about the body clock in just a moment because we have a couple of callers waiting. We're going to go to Judith in Watsonville. Judith, welcome to About Health. Hi. Hi. I'm really appreciating this show. I, I um, I did yoga for for many years I, I learned it mostly like from from Richard Hittleman from like records and things like that and 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 some instruction from uh, friends but I never like had a class or a teacher but it had come to a point where it was really a wonderful practice where when I did it I just felt so wonderful um, when I doing it and then and, and then after I was done and and then I ha had an automobile accident, and um, and then whenever I would try and do the like the postures, I guess it's the you know uh, the yoga postures. It would I would it would make me very dizzy, mm -hmm. and um, and so I, 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 I it was so persistent that I just I just couldn't it was and I couldn't continue doing that. But then some years later, I I, I found some. Like a video things of 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 a kind of qigong called qi lil qigong, hmm. and that has been really a, a a a wonderful practice. And I guess my question um, has to do with yoga. I, 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 over the years, I, I've, I've started to try and do some different simple stretching postures. I had a friend who gave me suggestions. Uh, um, but I, I was just wondering, what are some of the things that somebody that might have like real trouble with some of the postures? What are the things that I, I might focus on in, in terms of in, integrating yoga more into my life? I, and part of it is my life is complicated. I, I have chronic neurological Lyme disease, which really confuses everything. Mm. But um, so I guess I'm. What are some of the um, yoga practices or? or, or that, that, that I might think about um, mm. integrating. Okay. Um, going back to these Patanjali Yoga Sutras, and, you know, the three sutras that are about asanas are mainly about, well, getting to a comfortable asana so that you can meditate. But the, the rest of the yoga system is mainly these mental things that we are talking about. For example, the yamas and the niyamas, how to cleanse our vehicles of perception. So this is what we were talking today about, you know, if you can uh, integrate, for example, breathing. Um, that's a way of calming down, then it will calm down your mind and that will calm down, you know, your nervous system. So that will help. 
um, about the postures, I would be, you know, very careful, of course, because all these things that you are saying. But there are, for example, from Qigong, I would like to recommend that, you know, we all have these healing powers in our hands. Uh, like when a child gets uh, hurt, he immediately would cover the area and the ouchie. But mm-hmm. so we can direct our hands to where it hurts and then bring our mind, our intention and our attention to that particular point and then massage, you know, feel the energy that comes from your hands and massage to relax and to heal and have this desire of healing that area and then combine that with breathing, you know, so you are... Uh, any area that you want to relax or you want to heal, you imagine that you breathe through that area. So you do this kind of slow breathing and bring in that energy, the chi, the healing chi to that area by bringing your attention and your att- intention together. So that's something that you can do. Um, and um, then there are different kinds of breathings uh, that belong to um, the yoga. And one that I like a lot is the uh, alternate breathing. Do you know that one? I'm 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 not sure that I do. do. One one just question. Like sometimes relax. I'm, tiredness is something that I deal with. I don't. It, it, um, is there some things that are particularly energizing? Some of the, I don't know, the breathing. Yeah, I think, or, yeah well, I mean, usually one gets very depleted when there are emotions and when there is stress because, you know, there is this pull, push tension within your body that uh, makes your body tired. So within yoga, of course, there is a shavasana posture where you lay down and you just go uh, part from part, you know, from your feet up and you just bring your attention there and you inhale and then as you exhale, you relax your toes and then you relax your feet and then you relax your ankles and your thighs and you probably already know that, mm. right? Mm, I, yeah, okay. okay, and then for energizing, I would like to teach you something from... Uh, um, Qigong and uh, for example if you could uh, bring your hands to uh, your knees and put the hand uh, immediately under the the what is kneecap. this the kneecap thank you and then you have your hands there and you just tap in the sides of your knees uh, there is a point there called uh, three mile point. Oh, three mile, to walk three mile point. Yeah, walk yeah. three mile point. So you could wrap that point or you could tap that point. That's a very good point to bring energy also for runners, hikers, you know, all kinds of different. That's a very good point also if you have any kind of indigestion or whatever because it's a stomach point. So that would be very good. And then also kidney 27, which is by the side of, by the collarbones. Uh, that's the end of the mm-hmm. kidney meridian. That's a one that is going to give you a lot of energy. And also if you could direct your hands to your back, uh, where your kidneys are mm-hmm. and just wrap up and down and in and out briskly until you generate some heat there. That's a very, very good practice for energy. And also, you know, people who like for go for walks in the mountains or whatever, if they just keep their hands in their kidneys, they'll see that they can climb that hill, you know, so much better because kidney is an organ that's very related to energy. And I just love, Amelia, that you're actually doing all of these things <laughs> in the radio studio here. Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling the energy. You can coming feel over the energy the over the lines, right? Because she's actually doing all of the things that she's describing to you. It's, it's really so. Sweet. Now that you know practice, you know the the secret of all these things is not only to know them, but just to practice it every day. Practice it several times a day. Whenever you have a little moment, remember these simple tools and use them. Okay. Well, thank you. Bless Great. you. You're thank welcome. you for your call. We invite more listeners to call in with their comments or questions for our guest today, Amelia Beridli. In uh, the East Bay, you can give us a call at 848-4425, 848-4425. And outside the area, 1-800-958-9008. Something she said brought up a question for me, in fact, and just going back to one of the first things we talked about, that everything is energy. 
And I, um, I, I've come to understand that when you're working with energy, it's really the subtle things that are more powerful. And I think that a lot of people think about yoga as manipulating your body into these extreme postures. And yes, that is a part of it. But if we're talking about working with energy, I know many times in class you've said you don't have to, you can use your hand, you don't have to apply too much pressure. It's not about the pressure. So speak to that because I think that a lot of these practices have come to the West and been adopted in a different way. And I'm not criticizing the yoga studios that are like extreme exercise places because Mm -hmm. that has a benefit for the people that um, partake in them. But speak about how how it's really the subtle things when we're working with energy that have the most impact on our bodies and our emotions. Right. Um, Yeah, really, yoga is more like an inner trip. So the idea is that when you do the postures, you want to relax into the postures and you want to travel inward to all these sensations and you want to be comfortable and be able to hold the posture so that then there is a change that happens in your body with the stimulation to the endocrine glands and all that. But um, it's, it's funny, I was remembering one of the students in one of my classes, she does lots of things, um, also goes to the gym and all that, and she always wanted to have something more, something more, something more, and I was, until I finally one time <laughs> told her, you know, if you could just do this practice and then this allow for some time to uh, bring your attention inwards and feel the sensations after the practice. And that's what I, you know, do sometimes in the class too often. I, we do some massage or we do something, and then we stop and we close our eyes and we bring our attention inwards to try to sense the sensations in this universe within, which is so rich. And when you bring the attention and the intention, it's just so powerful. And and again, it goes to this idea that we have sometimes that, okay, if I do a stronger pressure, I'll have more effect. And sometimes you can have a much bigger effect with just bringing your hand, your fingers in contact with your skin and your body, and then totally focus your attention and your intention, your will there. Uh, it's a very different concept. Mm-hmm. But it's it's very, very powerful. And sometimes you may even feel it in relationships. Sometimes it's not the person that shouts the loudest, the one that gets the point across, but someone who really is totally present and um, just doing very little gifts, <laughs> whatever needs to be done across. This is the way of the goddess, certainly. <laughs> we have some other callers that have been waiting. We're going to go to Irma in Alameda. Irma, welcome to About Health. Oh, hi. 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 This is my first time calling. I got you guys. That's great. Um, my husband's listening. He's on his way to pick up uh, my stepchildren. But um, I, um, uh, he's the one that told me about your show. You know, I, I, I've been studying alternative medicine for about 30 years, and um, I, I um, you know, I'm an activist and all that jazz. I'm 51 years young, and and um, I just, um, I love your guest. Uh, she sounds really beautiful, and. Um, I wanted to ask her if she knew uh, what the connection is between like having pain on a shoulder to like um, it, what is that connection to? Because um, I went to see the Qigong master. Um, I just got like a little 20 minute treatment at the Green Festival, you know, that happened in, um, a couple of months ago in San Francisco, and um, you know, he he said that something very interesting. He said that the the shoulder pain that I have or whatever, you know, that I'm going through is connected to um, constipation or something. And uh, I was wondering because I've been eating, um, you know, um, more, um, I guess you could say red meat and other meats and fat. Because and, a girlfriend of mine wrote a book called Eat Fat, Lose Fat, The Power of Coconut Oil for Weight Loss and Overall Health. And um, I don't know, if, you know, if there's a connection or what, does Amelia think about that according to Qigong? Okay, what do you think? Um, I, when you were talking about the pain in the shoulder, I was thinking more perhaps, um, you know, of course, tension. Um, I was thinking more of maybe anger. Um, uh, that's part of the path of um, the gallbladder meridian that would go over the shoulder, for example. Um, the stomach meridian goes more in the front, but of course this 
points are in in uh, you know towards the middle of the body and sometimes more near the surface. So I don't know what was the base for that person to say constipation. But what I would do if if you know that you have constipation, well, I don't. If, if you don't. No. Oh, you don't. Well, you know, so he, so he why pressed, why do you? But he pressed like a, a um, down here. You know the where like guess um. Speak up a little bit, Irma, please. He he pressed really hard uh, at some point down here under on my left side, you know, on my stomach. Um, I guess where the uh, colon ends or whatever, and it was so painful. And it was just for my left shoulder, so I don't know if the right left has anything to do with that. But mm-hmm. anyhow, I think so I'm, I'm just gonna go to like do a cleansing with my own herbal medicine and, uh, and um, something something good for. Constipation or for balancing the, you know, any problems related to constipation. And also it's a very good point for grounding. It would be if you put three of uh, your finger with, uh, from your navel. Mm-hmm. And, uh, then you find a point there. That's a point, uh, in the. <coughs> in the navel? Uh, just three, three fingers oh, with, three fingers uh, under? Uh, under the navel, mm-hmm. and then you find a point there, and you just bring your, your middle finger towards that point, you know, both middle fingers there. You, it's very nice to do it if you are laying down, mm-hmm. and you just press there, and you press more or less firmly until you find something firm underneath. You know, it's, it's just kind of, you will notice. I mean, you don't create any pain, but just, uh, press straight inwards if you are laying down. And uh, it, that's a point that has a lot to do with the colon reflexes, so it will balance any kind of problems in your um, in your large intestine and uh, digestive tract. So just in case, I mean, everything is connected with everything. So he he may be right. I'm not saying he's wrong. I just it wasn't the first thing that came to my mind. But just well, you know, the next day I I felt so sick. I was like vomiting, and I had like I don't know. It was like a weird reaction because you know he put those suction cups in my back and everything. Mm Mm-hmm. And I don't know what the connection was. It was like I had got food poisoning or something. Mm. Like I was like dizzy, and you know, I, well, I, you know, I got cured with my herbal. I, I used an herbal extract called hyssop, mm-hmm. hyssop herbal extract, and that helped me balance back. But I mean, I was like really sick. Well, we appreciate your call, and before we're out of time, Amelia, I do want you to repeat again your class, so that if you would like more personalized attention, and many people that come to her class have specific problems with their knees or different areas of their body, and Amelia will address this in uh, the class. We learn about all of these things. So again, repeat when and where your class will be in February. It's in the Berkeley Buddhist Monastery, and that's uh, 2304 McKinley Avenue. And we are starting again on February 6th. Um, okay, and if folks wanted to contact you, is there any way, or they just come to this? Uh, yeah, they, if they want to pre-register, they could uh, contact me through ameliabaridi.com, or uh, they could they can send a, a check for registration. Uh, 16 classes is 200, and uh, four classes is 60, and one class is 20. So you can see that it gets cheaper. Yes. I, I want to encourage people to come for the whole thing uh, and because it, then they create a practice, and then they can go and take care of themselves. So it gets progressively cheaper. Um, and if you want to register for the 16 classes, which is $200, then you can... Uh, send a check to Amelia Baridi, 2727 Parker Street, Apartment G, Berkeley, 94704. Okay, I'm going to repeat the website again, and you spell her name A-M-E-L-I-A-B-A-R-I-L-I dot com, and you can email her at ameliabarili dot com. I'm wondering if we have time for one more caller. No, we don't. And so just... Let's just close here again with the idea of uh, this being a changing season. We're going into the new year and and just speak a little bit about how we can be more mindful as we enter the new year with these practices and awareness. Okay. Um, Well, one thing with the new year, it's letting go of the old year. So it would be good to practice, you know, uh, pressing that letting go point that we had said, the one that is uh, uh, on armpit 
uh, Chris, a little bit more towards the in first intercostal space, is lung first. And then another point that's very, very interesting is lever three, which is if you uh, bring your uh, the le le letting go one is to let go things that we were carrying around. And the uh, lever three is for if you are indecisive, if you are making these big decisions and you don't know very well what way to go, lever three is a wonderful point for indecisiveness, against indecisiveness. And that you bring your index finger between your first and second toe, and then you go like uh, a little bit up in your on top of the foot, like uh, here. Mm -hmm. and you press there and you breathe and that's a very very good point lever three and again you can learn all of these techniques by taking Amelia's class I thank you so much for coming on the show today Amelia every time that you come you bring a beauty and a grace and many many calls so thank you and happy new year to everyone thank you <laughs>